Welcome back to Discrete Mathematics. Today we're going to take a look at graph coloring. So this is a very important issue in computer science and graph theory. So unfortunately, there's not a huge introduction to graph coloring in this course for Discrete Math 2, but in the intro to graph theory, you would get crazy with this stuff. So graph coloring is essentially the number of ways we can color graphs. And we introduce this term proper coloring if, well, we can color a graph so that two vertices connected by an edge don't have the same color. So essentially what this means is that if we have, say, we have A connected to B, that means that A and B are going to be different colors. So for instance, because A is pink, that means that B cannot be pink. And what about C? Well, we can do C pink again. But that means that when we get to D, we can only have it green. In fact, well, we don't have to pick green. We could pick any other color we want. But normally what we want in graph theory is to find the minimal number of ways or the minimal number of colors we can use to color a graph. So we have a special term for that. And that is the chromatic number, which is chi of g. So this is pronounced, or it's written chi, it's pronounced chi. So we use this number to, to denote the minimum number of colors needed to color a graph. So for instance, let's take a look at k4. So how do we color a graph? Well, we pick a vertex to start at and we give it a color. So let's do orange in this bottom left vertex. And then we'll go to a new vertex and we'll pick a new color. So let's go to the top one. It's connected to the orange one, so it can't be orange. Therefore, we'll color it in yellow. Uh, let's go to the middle one now. Can't be orange, can't be yellow, so let's color it light blue. And then the bottom right, well, it can't be yellow, can't be blue, can't be orange. So let's go with green. So because each vertex is connected to each other vertex, we know that the chromatic number of K4 is just going to be four. So if we were to generalize this, then the chromatic number of Kn is going to be N. And this is because each vertex is connected to each other vertex and two connecting vertices cannot have the same color. So a nice little fact here is that the chromatic number of a graph Kn is just going to be n. Okay, so that's the chromatic number. That is coloring. But the big thing for figuring out how many colors and how many ways we can color graphs, because this is discrete mathematics, so counting is a big deal here, uh, we introduce the concept of a chromatic polynomial. And that tells us how many ways we can color a graph with at most lambda colors. So this chromatic polynomial takes a graph and takes a color argument. So we use lambda for colors. You can use whatever variable you want. I'm going to use lambda to be consistent. So how does this work? I should probably do an example. Okay, well, here's a couple of rules, a couple examples. Uh, basically, if the number of vertices is equal to n and there are no edges, then the chromatic polynomial is going to be lambda to the n. So why is this? Well, if we take a look at the vertices, let's start top left. If we have lambda colors, then we can color it any of lambda colors. Move on to a new vertex. Well, it's not connected to anything, so there's no restrictions on what colors we can't use, so it can be colored lambda different colors. And similarly, for each vertex, it's not touching anything else, so we can color it any of the lambda colors we have. So because v is equal to 5 in this example, the number of ways we can color this graph is going to be lambda to the 5. So if you have n vertices, lambda to the n. Now what about our complete graphs? Well, let's start at the bottom right. Let's color it. We can pick any lambda colors for it. 
Then we move to another vertex, and well, it can't be the same color that the first one was, so that means that we only have lambda minus one colors for the next vertex. And then let's say, let's go to this bottom left one now. Well, it can't be lambda colors because it's connected to the first vertex that we looked at. And it can't be the color of the top right vertex. So we remove two colors that we can use. So we say, okay, this bottom left one can be colored in lambda minus two ways. And similarly, this top left one will be colored in lambda minus three ways. So this is really just a permutation on a fixed number of items. So our result is going to be lambda factorial over lambda minus n factorial, where n is the number of vertices. So this is just a simple extension of counting. So for any complete graph, it's going to be lambda factorial over lambda minus n factorial ways of coloring it. So, what if we have a path? Well, we did a path at the very beginning of this video. So we'll start at A. We have lambda ways of coloring it. Now, B cannot be the same color as A. So we have lambda minus one ways of coloring B. C, well, the only restriction is that it can't be the same color as B but it can be the same color as A. So there's only lambda minus one ways to color C. And D has the same argument, and so does E. So what we have here is that the chromatic polynomial of this graph, lambda, is going to be lambda times lambda minus one to the four. So if we have an n vertex path, then the chromatic polynomial is going to be lambda times lambda minus one to the n minus one, because the first vertex can be any color we want. So that is the chromatic polynomial for paths. And of course, if we have some components, we just use the product rule. We take a look at the number of ways to color the first component, and we multiply it by the number of ways to color the second component. So in this example, for p of g lambda, well, the first one is a path of length three, so we know that's gonna be lambda times lambda minus one squared, because it's a path of length three. Then the second component is k3, so that's going to be lambda factorial over lambda minus 3 factorial. Really love it when the pen does this. So lambda factorial over lambda minus 3 factorial. And that is going to be the number of ways to color this graph. Of course, we could expand it and simplify it, but it's unnecessary. So what if we have a bipartite graph, K21? Let's take a look at this. Let's draw it. Okay. We get a graph like this. Well, how do we do this one? Well, really, this is just a path of length three. Color the first one lambda ways. The second one, well, can't be that same color. It's lambda minus one. Then the one to the left here is going to be also lambda minus one ways. So this must just be lambda times lambda minus one squares, squared. So that's not too bad. What about k of m1? In fact, more specifically, what is the minimum number of colors needed to do k m1? Well, Let's say we have m vertices, and they're all connected to this one on the right. Okay. Well, we're looking for the chromatic number. So what's the minimum number of ways, or the minimum number of colors we need to color this graph? Well, let's pick a color for the one over here. Then 
Well, we could color all of these the exact same color. So the chromatic number of KM1 is going to be equal to 2. We could use more. We could say color the first one purple, the next one green. I guess we can't do green because we just picked green. We can do dark green. We can do dark purple. We can do black because you can see that so well. So on and so forth. And we could use many more colors, but for KM1, we just need two. So that's the very basics of graph coloring and chromatic polynomials. This is where the material for the final exam stops. So if you go to trevtutor.com in the discrete math two section, there is a final exam. You can practice everything up to here. I don't include trees or the algorithms we're going to be looking at next because uh, they're a little bit of a pain to type up. I know it's a horrible excuse, but also the concepts are pretty straightforward. And even in most discrete math texts, uh, there's usually only one example for those. So if you watch the videos, you should be good enough to do those concepts. So that is the end of this video. What I should do is probably give you one example of what I mean when I say lambda. So we said K3 is lambda times lambda 1 times lambda minus 2. So what does this mean? This means if I pick lambda equal to 2, which means I have two colors, let's say it's these two, then the chromatic polynomial here is going to be equal to 0. It means there's zero ways to do it, so we can't do it. What if we pick lambda equal to 3? Then we have 3 times 3 minus 1 times 3 minus 2, which is going to be 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So if we pick three colors to choose from, we can do it in six different ways. So if this is blue, this can be green, and this can be pink, and then we can swap these two colors, and then we can rotate the colors that are in the top and do the same thing. So little demonstration of that, just in case people were confused about what I meant with Lambda. So, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, check out treptutor.com for some more videos, and feel free to share this and like the video if you support it, because you'll help me out and you'll help your friends out. So, that's it. See you guys next time.